SpaceX's ultimate plan is to make a rapid and fully reusable vehicle capable of sending humans to the moon and Mars as inexpensively and routinely as possible. Not your everyday design goal for a rocket, huh? To be rapidly and fully reusable, the engine needs to run clean and require low maintenance with simple turbo pump seals in low burner temperatures. SpaceX has notched up another milestone in the development of Starship, fixing its Raptor vacuum engine to the spacecraft and test firing it for the first time. This marks another important step in the company's ongoing efforts to reach Mars, with this larger engine variant to perform the important role of propelling the massive vehicle once it reaches outer space. Starship is SpaceX's next-generation vehicle designed to transport people and cargo to the Moon and Mars, and back in May, the company successfully flew it to high altitude and landed it for the first time. The Raptor engines that propelled this test flight are what are known as sea-level variants, which feature small nozzles designed to safely eject the exhaust gas at the atmospheric pressures found at sea level while generating thrust to lift the rocket off the ground. Just days after unveiling SpaceX's radically redesigned Raptor engine, Elon Musk says the system is now powerful enough to support his ambitious Mars plans. In an update following recent test fires of the Raptor engine, the SpaceX boss said it hit 172 metric tons of force, surpassing what's needed for Starship and Super Heavy. Ultimately, however, the huge Super Heavy rocket will require as many as 31 Raptors to carry it to space. Raptor just achieved the power level needed for Starship and Super Heavy, Musk tweeted on October 21st alongside a picture from the test fire. Design requires at least 170 metric tons of force. An engine reached 172 MT and 257 bar chamber pressure with warm propellant, which means 10% and 20% more with deep cryo, the CEO added. The engine will one day power the Super Heavy rocket and Starship on missions to the moon and beyond. The SpaceX CEO shared footage on Twitter from the first test firing of the Raptor rocket engine this weekend and provided an update on the capabilities that will help it reach the moon as fast as possible. It comes just days after Musk's Starship prototype was knocked over by 50 mph per hour winds in Texas and suffered extensive damages. Engineers at the company ignited a vacuum version of a Raptor rocket engine that had been attached to the Starship upper stage. SpaceX had been developing the Raptor engine over the last few years as part of its plan to eventually send tourists to Mars. The test firing at sunset at South Texas lasted only a few seconds, but it appears to have been successful, and it checks another box in a series of technical tests SpaceX must complete before launching Starship on a super heavy rocket for an orbital test flight. This may happen sometime in early 2022. SpaceX has test fired its Starship vehicle with Raptor engines before, of course. In some prototype test flights, the vehicle has ascended to about 10 kilometers under the power of up to three Raptor sea level engines. But it is quite another thing to test a rocket with a version of Raptor optimized to operate in the vacuum of space. Expanding Nozzles Rocket engines have many parts, of course, but the largest and most prominent is the nozzle, which channels the flow of exhaust gas. This exhaust originates in the combustion chamber where oxidizer and propellant combust. This exhaust gas is then pushed through a narrow opening called the throat to accelerate it. Now traveling supersonic, the exhaust expands as it enters the nozzle where the longer and wider nozzle is, the faster the exhaust moves. Because there is negligible atmospheric pressure in the vacuum of space, the engine nozzles that perform this role can be much larger and in turn, generate far more thrust. Starship's upper stage will carry three sea-level Raptor engines along with three vacuum Raptor engines with much bigger nozzles which SpaceX began testing last year. Faster gas coming out of a rocket engine is good because it delivers more thrust. More thrust means your rocket can lift more mass. An expanded nozzle, therefore, means better performance. So why don't all rocket engines have giant nozzles? A phenomenon is known as flow separation, which happens when the flow of gas inside an engine separates from the nozzle walls. This can induce turbulence and vibrations. In the worst case scenario, it could result in the engine blowing itself up. There is no absolute value for when this occurs, but the risk of flow separation increases when the pressure of exhaust exiting the nozzle falls below 50% of the ambient pressure. This isn't a problem in space, where the atmospheric pressure is essentially zero, but at sea level, the larger the nozzle, the greater the risk of flow separation. The most common way to address this issue is to design a rocket's first stage with engines optimized for performance at sea level and an upper stage with vacuum-optimized engines. 
The Falcon 9 rocket, for example, has a first stage with nine Merlin engines, with smaller nozzles that do all the work in the lower atmosphere, and a Merlin vacuum engine with a much larger nozzle for outer space. Alternative Approaches NASA's Space Shuttle took a more hybrid approach. Its main engines, which fired throughout its flight profile from launch into orbit, sacrificed performance on both ends. The shuttle ended up with a nozzle as large as possible at sea level. It pushed the limits on flow separation without going over the edge, but considerably smaller than would be an optimal vacuum. SpaceX's Starship upper stage is designed to fly in both thick atmospheres and space. It aims to solve the nozzle size conundrum by flying with three sea level Raptor engines and three vacuum Raptor engines. The test in October marked the first time one of the vacuum engines was attached to a Starship vehicle and test fired. The most experienced U.S. upper stage engine, the RL-10, manufactured by Aerojet Rocketdyne, has a massive expansion ratio in that its nozzle size is much larger than its throat. So this engine can only be tested on the ground in a large vacuum chamber. So, how did SpaceX complete the test firing of the vacuum optimized engine without destroying it? In response to this question, SpaceX founder Elon Musk said on Twitter that the company solved the problem by building the Raptor engine to produce a very high pressure chamber. The engine is also not yet fully optimized for a vacuum, so there was enough margin to prevent flow separation from destabilizing it. This allowed SpaceX to complete its test without anything blowing up. The final iteration of Starship's lower stage, meanwhile, the Super Heavy rocket, will use close to 30 Raptor engines to lift 100 metric tons to Earth orbit, making it the most powerful launch vehicle ever developed. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk said that the first orbital launch for the next-gen spacecraft could take place as early as November if the company can gain the necessary approvals from the Federal Aviation Administration. If all goes well, Starship will be ready for its first orbital launch attempt soon pending regulatory approval. SN20 fired up for the first time. For the first time since vehicle creation, SpaceX fired the engines of the Starship SN20, the prototype orbital of his spacecraft, in a quick ignition test performed on the 18th of October. The test was relatively quick and without much fanfare, probably intending to test the ignition speed of the Raptor thrusters, six of which will be coupled to the spacecraft and will propel it into Earth orbit during the execution of its official flights. The launch pad Starship consists of the eponymous ship and the Super Heavy rocket. Between the two vehicles, 35 Raptor propulsion engines will be coupled. Since August, SpaceX has been conducting tests on all three pillars, the spacecraft, the rocket, and the thrusters, to ensure that the entire assembly is fully operational. Although not confirmed by the company, the test on the 18th was probably related to the first stage of the combustion cycle called preburner, which heats and mixes the propellants, oxygen, and liquid methane in the engine. Think of it as a first shot, a few seconds longer. After that, the static ignition test will probably come when the propulsion system is briefly fired in full, but with the spacecraft anchored to the ground. McGregor Factory, all these Raptor engines arrive at Starbase after having been processed at SpaceX's McGregor test site. Currently, the engines are assembled at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, before taking a road trip to Texas for hot fire testing on one of five available test stands. Elon Musk had already noted that the Raptor production would increase, aided by a new factory at the McGregor facility, allowing Hawthorne to focus on RVAX and a new design evolutions for the Methalox powerhouse. This allows McGregor to produce the main stock of Raptor 2 engines to cater for a large number of boosters and starships, each requiring 36 Raptor 2s in total, based on the 33 on the booster and 3 on the starship. With groundwork observed by Gary Blair over recent weeks, the latest pass noted the framework of the factory is now being assembled. While this factory will still be some time away from the assembling Raptor 2s, Hawthorne is already building the streamlined version of the Raptor, with the McGregor test stands being worked on in preparation for test firings. Centralizing Raptor production and testing at McGregor will also streamline the flow of Raptors to Starbase, removing the California to Texas leg for all engines except for the RVs. Also, this production increase provided a fascinating scenario of how many Raptors SpaceX will require in circulation, given the full reusability of the Starship system. A large stock of Raptors points to a huge fleet of vehicles, as Musk has always envisioned. Let us know what you think of SpaceX's Raptors engines by leaving a comment in the section below.